Welcome back to the channel. It's time to talk about the very best comic books that you can buy and read this week. And with me, as always, is Drew from Comics Lead. How you doing, Drew? Doing great, Wes. It was a very interesting reading week. Uh, but let's talk about this. Let's talk about the great comics this week from this very interesting week. Marvel Comics absolutely dropped the ball. They didn't have a lot to recommend. In fact, we won't talk about them at all. But fortunately, Indie Comics were there and DC Comics were there with some pretty good stuff. First up, we'll recommend Ice Cream Man number 35. W. Maxwell Prince with Martin Morazzo on art from Image Comics. This has been a fantastic horror anthology series, but this is the most distinctive issue I've ever read. Every one of them feels different, but this one felt so different than anything that W. Maxwell Prince has done in the past. This isn't so much a horror story. Well, maybe it's like his inner horror or whatever, but you got this guy. He's writing down who all these monsters are and what their characteristics are. He's trying to do like the, the monster Bible or something like this. <laughs> I just thought it was really interesting. We get a lot of pros in here. Uh, there definitely was some interesting information about Ice Cream Man himself. And I thought it was a really cool introspective look at how you might actually be your own worst enemy in some cases. Yeah, I am I was laughing because this re this was by far the run my runaway pick of the week. I had so much fun reading this. It was so different. It's so interesting, so intriguing, so thought-provoking. Very funny in a dark way, I'll say that. Because like you said, this, this story is narrated by a man who says this book he's writing is going to be so important. It's going to be in all the motels. It's going to replace the Bibles. It's going to replace the Quran. It's going to be the book everyone will read. And yes, it does have these different monsters, these different internal monsters that we all face. And, but at the same time, like I said, it is a horror-based horror, horror -based series kind of in a way. But what's great about this is that it, we, if you're a familiar reader with this, it's a it's the buildup. It's the you don't know what's going to happen. You you you're waiting for something to happen. You know it's going to happen. There's gonna be something scary that's going to happen. And I'm reading this. I'm it's the buildup. It's that the intention. It's, yes, it's the it's the intention. It's the it's the what I'm picturing in my mind. The imagination of what he's writing on the prose because that is even more terrifying. Because when you get to that last page and he brings up a creature from the very first issue and what this this thing did to his family, my imagination. I can't, it's hard for me to think about it, but yeah, this is a man going insane writing about all these internalized demons, but it's also darkly funny at the same time with, with one of the demons in particular about a, a yoga instructor. I, I, I thought it was hysterical, but yeah, this is a very, very fun, funny, dark, scary. It, this hits the whole, the whole gambit of emotions when you read this book, this series. Please do check out Ice Cream Man, guys. You are going to love this series. It's so different from everything else. It is so interesting. W. Maxwell Prince is a truly, truly creative, great writer right now. If you guys aren't reading this, please do jump on board with this. There are very few geniuses in the comic book industry when it comes to writing right now, and W. Maxwell Prince might be on that level. Absolutely. Say. Another big recommend from you is Red Room Crypto Killers. Number one, Fanagraphics, Ed Piscor, writing and illustrating this one. He's been working on this series now for, I think, for the last two years, I believe. But uh, what's great about it, each issue he's done for, for Red Room is that they're all their own standalone comics that you can read. You don't have to read anything in, in the prior issues, which is great. But this is the first one, one of the few, at least, where it, this is a callback to the very first issue with the first guy, the first uh, crypto uh, killer. And when he's, he's, he's killed. But um, this follows his daughter and pretty much the fallout from him dying and that you see everything that she's having to go through. And uh, it's what's great about this issue as well is that unlike the prior issues of Red Room, where it's very graphic, very crazy, very violent. Very graphic. Behavior, yes. This one isn't that much. It, there's not that much graphicness in this issue. And it's very much I, I very much a Edgar Allan poe -ish type feel to this where it's like it's the. The dread of what's going to happen with these characters. You just get this buildup of what's going to happen to him toward the end. And it's a very great – it's it kind of like – yeah, it's like, very much like a Casper Montiato by the end of this because what happens to him is pretty damn creepy. And I do never want to go through that in my life. But, uh, yeah, this is a very fun read, very different from the prior issues. It's not as graphic, so if you're, if you're afraid of that, you won't get that that much in this. But it's a very fun read, very well illustrated. Ed Piscor is growing as a storyteller. Please do check out Red Room Crypto Killers number one. If you haven't noticed over the past few months or possibly years at this point, Drew is an enormous horror comic book fan. He's always looking out for the best horror stuff. So if that's your thing, definitely listen to Drew on that one. We're also going to recommend Man Go and Buddy Man 2023 from Xenoscope. Joe Brushu on this one. You've been singing the praises of Man Goat and Bunny Man for a while. 
Yeah, what's great about this is that it's so irreverent. It's so absurd and crazy that I enjoy it. It, it is actually a very funny comic it, from the from the get go of a year or so ago when the first series launched. I loved it. You know, the the the, the fact that this bunny is not just a killer, but like he's like a like a demon bunny, and th- th- this. This run, this issue in particular, it gets so crazy and over the top with his dad and uh, how this the bunny man maybe end up fulfilling a prophecy. It, it, if you love absurd takes with characters that you don't, you you you, you, have, you think it's going to go a certain way, but it doesn't. This is very much that series. I cannot recommend this enough. It, it, they keep bringing this back. I think they, they, they really don't anticipate it to be as successful as it turns out to be because it is such a fun read. It's so creative. It's so funny. Please do check out Mango and Bunny Man, guys. I, I don't want to spoil it, but do know you will not see it coming in this book. That is a big theme, pretty much, of almost everything that we're talking about this week. Yep. They've all got some really crazy surprise twist endings. You know yes, what's that one, Drew? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Next up, the final indie comic book that we're going to recommend, Little Monsters, number 13, Image Comics, Jeff Lemire, Dustin Wynn, powerhouse creative team working together on the latest series. They should be doing this at DC or something. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they did the uh, Robin and Batman, which was terrific. And I, if, if you have not checked out Robin and Batman, it's only three issues came out last year. It is beautiful. One of the best stories from DC by far that came out. And this issue, I believe this is the final issue of the, the series or this run. And this is a, this ends on a very somber note for a lot of the characters. And there's one mo- there's one particular page in this when it involves the brothers and uh, because the one has already died at this point and the other one, he may or may not have a um, may or may not survive it by the end of this issue. But the conversation he has, it, it got it got me because I've lost a brother. And you see, when he's talking to him, it it, it got me. It it really fit, it gets you in the gets you right here in the in the core of you. But uh, it, it wraps everything up in this issue. I cannot recommend this recommend this series enough. This issue, please do check out Little Monsters Guy Jeff Lemire. He is one of the best storytellers right now in comics. And that wraps up our indie comic book recommendations. And normally we'd start talking about Marvel, but shame on you, Marvel. You didn't produce anything worth recommending this week. What's wrong with you guys? You gotta smack him, smack him right across the face. Come Dude, on. Suck. Be better. Good thing DC Comics actually delivered some pretty decent stuff. Not surprisingly, we are definitely enthusiastically recommending Batman Superman World's Finest number 15, Mark Wade, Dan Mora, back together once again, finishing up the metamorpho story that we've been going through. He was framed for murder. They know that he didn't do it now. It turns out it might be a guy that's associated with robots within the DC Comics universe. And we just see so many characters that I don't even know who they are in this comic book. They just come out of everywhere. You're going to see the Metal Man. You're going to see any type of robotic character ever in DC Comics history is in this one. It probably should have been two issues instead of just one because it's very fast paced. It reads like it's going about 150 miles an hour, but... There's a reason this is the best comic book series being produced by DC or Marvel Comics, or maybe even anything. Although Mark Miller's doing some really good stuff, but he doesn't do ongoings. 15 issues in a row, absolute dynamite every single time. Congratulations, Mark Wade. Not many other people are able to accomplish that these days. Yeah, every issue's been a knockout. Even like the one standalone issue, the date night between Robin and Supergirl, that was a fun issue. I got to recommend that one as well. But yeah, this one, what, what, what you just said, Wes, is that everyone I've talked to, there's, there's in this particular issue. There's at least one character someone has not recognized in this book. Whether it's a robot, whether it's a legacy character from DC. I talked to uh, Max Phil von Priestley. He didn't recognize the Challengers of Unknown of the Unknown, and uh, on one page, and I thought that was great. And we got a lot of robot characters in here. Some of which I've never heard of or seen before, which was which is always great. I love that's why I love Mark Wade. He's able. To, he's He's not like Jeff Johns creating all these BS redundant characters. He's pulling from the depths of DC's legacy and bringing them back to the forefold for everyone to see and enjoy. I got to respect that. I got to respect him for that. And this issue was, like you said, it's very fast paced as well. There's one or two pages in particular where Mark and Dan kind of really jam them together as it doesn't give those pages time to breathe. It's a lot happens in these pages. And it's like, Whoa, this really should have been spaced out, but Hey, maybe constraints by DC. I, I It's fine, but it still reads well. And by the end of this issue, it does not look good for anyone, in particular the human race. And I cannot wait to see what happens next. If you love DC legacy characters, if you're not familiar with DC legacy characters, you want to get in on them, please do check out World's Finest, guys. This is by far DC's 
best book out right now and arguably probably better than any anything that marvel's doing right now too oh easily better than any, anything else marvel's doing and hey sometimes i just want to see some good guys fighting some bad guys with the entire world on the line and not fighting global warming or something stupid like that thank you very much for that one we'll also recommend flash 799 the end of the road this is the final solo issue from jeremy adams he will also finish his story i guess in flash 800 but we're getting a new creative team, and this is the end of the road. Obviously, Jeremy Adams writes this one. Fernando Passerin, Eau Claire Albert, Wade Von Grawbadger, and Tom Duranik are the artists on this one. Once again, I wish they would have just had one artist. It does throw off the book, and it makes it a little bit harder to read because their styles do not really mesh. But if you want to talk about balls-to-the-wall zaniness, that's what this cobble book is. Wade West has been kidnapped by Granny Goodness, and it's time for the Flash family to go there. They pick up like a purple wrestler along the way. And we end up having like an enormous galactic, I don't know, cage match. So I don't know how you describe this thing. It is so out there and so insane. I applaud Jeremy Adams. It's not the most coherent thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> it's certainly not like the most emotional impact I've ever had in a comic book. But just as like somebody saying, screw it, let's celebrate comic books. That's what happens here. It was, it was great. I love yeah. it. Yeah, you're right. It's this is an issue where it, you, you're going to have to turn your brain off. Just go with it. It, it. it is absurd. It's over the top. It's zany. Yeah, this is the purple wrestler. He came. He he was introduced, I think, five, ten issues, ten issues ago, and uh, he, he's back now. And yeah, it's just when you're reading when you're reading this, it's like, what is happening right now? Don't ask. Don't ask questions. Just go with it. It is, it is crazy and over the top. And uh, but yeah, the one weak point. It, to this is that Fernando couldn't do the whole issue. He hasn't been able to do the full issues the last few times, which is kind of a, a sad thing, but uh, just go with it. That's all I'm going to say for Flash 799. Just go with it and you'll enjoy it. I really enjoyed Jeremy Adams' time on Flash. I think he did a lot of great things for Wally West. Although after this week, it might not matter, so whatever. Nope. Doesn't matter what Jeremy Adams did. You got to do something with that character. The final recommendation we do have is Superman number four, Josh Williamson, Jamal Campbell with Nick Dragota on art here. We have multiple artists once again, but Jamal Cable and Nick Dragota's styles definitely mesh a lot better than we're seeing in a lot of other series where we're having multiple artists. So I did appreciate that one. There is a big prolonged conversation between Superman and Lex Luthor in prison. This isn't my highest recommendation in the history of the world, but I did appreciate the issue. I thought there was some interesting stuff. And there is a really funny reveal at the end concerning like a legacy character for Superman that I thought was just... I don't know. It felt like 1960s comic books. I thought it was great. Yeah, sure. I mean, hey, they're, they're having fun with Jimmy Olsen. You know, it's not, it hasn't, it's been a long while since we've actually had some fun with Jimmy Olsen in the books. And the last, I mean, recently in Mark Wade's run of uh, World's Finest, you got Jim, uh, Jimmy Olsen being a reporter, which was fun. And this one, yeah, he's at the forefront because he may, may or may not be in a relationship with a certain character. I'm not going to say who. I thought that was great. And um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Lex stuff. I'll say that because uh, I've got to bad. Yeah, I, I saw that. I, Lex Luthor is not a good guy. He's never going to be redeemed mm -hmm. and he never can be a good guy. Chop, stop trying to sell me this. Although I'm pretty certain we're going to have that revealed eventually. Yeah, I'm 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 hoping, hoping like that was a lie by on his part. Like, it has that, to be. It has to be. It absolutely has to be from his point of view. It was a lie, but uh, I I did love this the uh, the Jimmy Olsen and the the other character who may be in love with stuff. I I got a kick out of that. The the the, the, the this evil conclave of like scientist villains, what they're doing with Bizarro. I love that stuff. What they've been doing, how they've kind of suddenly been teasing them in their prior issues. This is the best stuff of the comic, and um, I can't wait to get more of them. And the next issue should be hopefully just as fun. And yeah, uh, Jamal Campbell, his art. It's beautiful. I, it's arguably the best stuff from the Superman run we've had since it started with jo Josh Williamson. And that will do it, folks. Those are our recommendations this week. If you have different recommendations, definitely put them in the comments section. We're looking to get the word out about good cobble books. And just because I don't like something or Drew doesn't like something as much as you do, doesn't mean that it's not a great cobble book and people shouldn't go check it out. So definitely do that one. Speaking of cobble books, Drew, you have a crowdfunded comic book campaign going on right now. Congratulations. You've already surpassed uh, any number that you've done this early in a campaign. Absolutely, yeah. We uh, we're we're at currently seventy eight thousand eight fifty four in three and a half days, which has shattered every Merck and Black Ops publishing record we've ever had. And uh, please do check out Power Hour number two. I did not write Power Hour number one. Sean brought me on for Power Hour two because he saw the quality of writing I was putting into Born of Blood, 
And uh, if you like Born of Blood, if you like my writing, if you like what I say, what I preach, then you will enjoy Power Hour number two. It is a very fun story. It's not just a booby cover book. There is a story here, guys. You will enjoy it. Ali Garza, legend Ali Garza is on the interior art as well. Unfortunately, last week, Drew and I did not get to do best of the week. We didn't get to talk about all the amazing comic books. And there was one comic book that I actually had to go out and make a solo video on because I did enjoy it. I'm a huge Green Lantern fan. We would have talked about it last week. I had to go solo on this one. If you miss out on this and you were wondering about Green Lantern, definitely check this video out right here because I break it all down. There's also a link in the video description.